dirty floors, streaky windows, dusty cats. I think it's time for your weekly home blessing. Today, we're gonna complete seven cleaning tasks in exactly one hour, and I, Ariel, will be your personal human timer to keep you on track. I wanna be clear that you're not cleaning your whole house, but only the high traffic area, such as your kitchen, living room, and dining room. And by the end of this hour, your home is gonna feel so much more relaxing to be in. So are you ready? Let's do it. Head to the bedroom because the first thing on our list is to change the sheets. I'm setting your timer for 10 minutes now. Take everything off your bed, your pillowcases, comforter, sheets, duvet. We're replacing them all. And if you have a washing machine, why not just run to the laundry room and start it? Then by the end of this weekly home blessing, you can switch it to the dryer. You won't even have to worry about forgetting because I, your human timer, will remind you. Now I'm sure you probably have other sheets in the house that need washing. Your baby's crib sheets, your toddler's bedding, if you can get to it since it's likely buried under about 50 stuffed animals. Tell me in the comments how many stuffed animals your kids have. How do you feel when somebody buys your child one? Are you that grandma who picks up the life-size bunny at Easter? Shame on you, grandma. Maybe a kid's dream come true, but it's a mother's worst nightmare. I forgive you though. I know you just want to spoil your grandchildren. I get it. One day I'll be that grandma, I'm sure. And my daughter-in-law will detest that part of me with a passion, but that just adds to the fun, right? I learned very quickly about the stuffed animal epidemic after I had my first son. So when it came time for a second birthday party, I put in big letters at the bottom of the invite, no stuffed animals. Everyone listened. No one bought a stuffed animal. Well, Except grandma, of course. She didn't listen. You grandmas. So with this video being an hour long, I'm gonna touch on a lot of very random subjects. I hope you don't mind me talking your ear off for an hour. I probably won't talk the entire hour though. I'll have a good mix of talking and music and you may even get to see me tango again with a random household object. What will it be this time? A broom? A mop? You'll just have to wait and find out. I'm very classy and I only dance with classy items. So I will admit that not all the footage used in this video is new. Some I filmed yesterday and some I filmed a year ago. But that's okay because I'm just here to be your timer and tell you what to do. Now for the next task, give your husband a wet willy and I'm setting the timer for 10 minutes and go. I'm kidding, we're still changing our sheets, but tell me his reaction if you really did it, because I could use a good laugh. Life is a winding road, no telling where it goes. Driving through days and nights, won't stop for traffic lights. Searching for my highs You can say I lost my mind I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down Falling down, even if the sky is falling down, yeah. 
So a couple weeks ago, I asked in a community post what time you guys wake up in the morning. 60% of you said between 6 and 7. Oh, how I would dream of waking up between then. My baby says, hey, it's 5 a.m., time to get up. I was so excited for daylight savings because finally, Skyla would be waking up at 6 instead of 5. So I put her to bed at 7 and I told my family how pumped I was that I was going to be able to stay up till 11 again without being utterly exhausted. And then the next morning, she wakes up at 5, which would have been 4 if it wasn't daylight savings time. What the heck? If I am awake before 6am, I'm just angry. No one should be awake before the sun comes out. Oh, and nothing makes me more mad than those birds in the middle of summer that seem to think they have the right to chirp at 4 a.m. as if that is considered the morning. Okay, I happen to be filming this video way too early, so perhaps I am just a little bit cranky. Forgive me. But God is good, and he says that sorrow may last for the night, but joy comes in the morning. And I'll admit, I am joyful. When I have my first sip of coffee, there's nothing like a morning cup of joe. Why do they call it joe anyway? Let me look it up. Let's learn a thing today. Okay, readersdigest.com says, the iconic nickname a cup of joe has several origin stories. One legend concerns Josephus Daniels, the secretary of the Navy during World War I. In 1914, he banned alcohol consumption on all US Navy ships. Since coffee was the next strongest substitute, sailors sarcastically deemed it a cup of Josephus. But as that was a bit of a mouthful, the snarky nickname became shortened to just a cup of joe. Very interesting. I don't know why, but my first two cups of coffee always wake me. However, if I have a third cup in the afternoon, it never fails to make me sleepy. Sometimes I just want a third cup for my drinking pleasure. And then I remember how tired it always makes me. I wonder why that is. It's very strange. So I just stick to two cups now. How many cups of coffee do you drink a day? And how are you doing changing those bed sheets? Are you done? We still have more time, but if you're a superwoman, then you can get a head start on the next task, which will be purging paper clutter. But for the rest of us who move at the pace of a herd of snails stampeding through peanut butter, we're gonna keep on our task of changing the sheets because we are very thorough, right ladies? I'd love to know if there is a man who is cleaning along with me. That would be cool because of the stigma that men don't clean enough. But we know they still exist, the rare species of men that clean their house. They're out there, and if you find one, we need to bring him to a lab to be studied. Maybe we can figure out his brain formula to see if we can replicate it. So I ran out of footage of myself changing the sheets, but that's okay. I will just replay this short clip of me dancing with my comforter for the next minute or so. Time is almost up.
Okay, get ready to start purging your papers. For this one, I'm gonna split it up with garbages so we can keep this clean under an hour. You will have five minutes and go. Head to those hot spots and go through the papers one by one. What is garbage? Throw it out. What needs to be filed away? Make a small pile. What needs to go into a memory box? Make another small pile. We are gonna get through some of these papers and by the end of the five minutes, your stack will be a little shorter. If your stack is really big right now, then just focus on what is garbage. I'm sure there's junk mail in there and we don't want junk mail taking up precious space on our counters. So goodbye, see you later junk mail, fill up someone else's countertops because this is a place for food, not paper. How many spots in your home are covered in papers? They really do piles up so quickly. To combat that, I try to open my mail right away. Mail just isn't fun when you're an adult. Remember when you were a kid and getting mail was like the most exciting thing in the world? And it was always fun mail. A birthday invitation or a magazine subscription your parents bought you? Now mail is a disappointment. Oh great, the water bill. whoop de doo I've been pre-approved for a new credit card. Oh fun, a Christmas card from crazy Aunt Sally posing with her cat. That is kind of fun. But being an adult isn't as fun as being a kid. Of course, you get more freedom. You can do whatever the heck you want. You can eat ice cream at seven in the morning and go to Denny's at midnight. But you're too busy for any of that anyway because you have a full-time job or children, which is basically like having a full-time job. And then people expect you to act like an adult too when I really just want to eat chicken nuggets for dinner and have a slumber party with my best friend at 28 years old. Is that too much to ask? So if while you're going through your papers, you find a bill that needs to be paid, go ahead and pay it. It's gotta be done at some point and now is a great time to do it. Or if there's some random paperwork that needs to be filled out, go ahead and fill it out. This is a great time to take care of those needs. Plus you don't wanna be late on a bill because then you acquire late fees and nobody wants that. I normally stick them on my fridge so that I don't forget but I have forgotten before and that wasn't a good time. Thank God for the internet where we can set up auto pay. I don't know how our parents managed to keep up on the bills without auto pay. Sounds like it would have been a lot of work to maintain. All right, let's cut to the music for a bit. Keep on purging. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side our fears are done. Oh, the good times just begun Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy, but things are finally right With you and I, the future is bright The time is almost up. If you made a pile of papers to be filed away, then quickly run to your file box or filing cabinet and take care of it. Let's not finish our paper purging without taking the opportunity to make the stack a little bit shorter. If you don't have a file box, then you should get one. You need a place to organize all of your papers because otherwise they get out of control very quickly. I will link my favorite file box in the description of this video. So how do you feel? Are you getting through a lot of papers? Imagine if you did this for five to 10 minutes every week. Never underestimate the power of five minutes. It's amazing what we can accomplish in such a small amount of time. I honestly believe the hardest part is just getting started. We always think things are gonna be harder than they really are. 
All right, we're done with paper. Now we will move on to garbages. Setting the timer now, and you have five minutes. Go. You know, they say you can learn a lot about a person just from looking through their garbage. It can reveal your eating habits, what you buy, what prescription medication you're taking, your hobbies. That's why investigators will go through people's trash when trying to solve a homicide. So if you ever decide to go out and murder someone, make sure you take care of the trash. Or just don't murder anyone anytime soon. That's probably a better solution. All right, I ran out of footage. So I guess it's time for one of my famous tango dances. Except this time, instead of dancing with a feather duster, I will dance with a garbage bag. Because like I said, I'm classy. Uh, yeah, the five minutes is not up yet, so I guess roll the clip again.
Okay, we are done with the garbages. I hope you enjoyed my tango, but now it's time to move on to dusting. So grab your dusters or your microfiber cloths and let's get started. You have 10 minutes. I know how you feel about dusting. You skip it all together, don't you? You go straight to vacuuming without even considering grabbing your duster. I know it because I do it too. Dusting always feels like something we can skip, something that nobody will notice. But when I go to someone else's house and their bathroom counters are covered in dust, I notice. So why do I think that someone's not gonna notice at my house? Before starting Fly Lady in 2021, I literally had never dusted, ever. When I was growing up, we cleaned a lot, especially on Saturdays, but we never really dusted. We washed windows, we swept, mopped, cleaned toilets, cleaned tables, but dusting? I have no recollection of that. When you were growing up, did you ever see your parents dusting? Like who even does that? Well, I guess every cleaning expert ever. It doesn't seem very important, but I suppose it is, especially with dust mites and allergies, and it just doesn't look good when your surfaces are covered in it. So today we're gonna take care of it once and for all. Though I wish the once part was true. If only I could dust one time and be done forever. If only I could have birds that clean for me. Ugh, Snow White had it so good. Well, except for the fact that the evil queen was basically stalking her with the intent to murder, but would it be worth it? To have birds clean for you at the expense of someone obsessively trying to kill you, resulting in you never feeling safe? Hmm, that's a, that's a tough one. Cause I like a clean house, but I also like being alive and I'm basically gonna die trying to keep my home clean for the rest of my remaining life. So th the ending is the same anyway. <sighs> okay, this is getting too gruesome. So while you're dusting, make sure to dust from top to bottom because then you won't have to dust anything twice. Start with the ceiling fans, lights and photo frames and move your way down to under the couch which is a very dusty place in my home. You wouldn't think dust would collect under there, but I would bet you that under your couches and your beds may just be some of the dustiest places in your home. What is dust made of anyway? Well, because I have nothing better to do, I looked it up. According to National Geographic, dust can be made of pollen, bacteria, smoke, ash, salt crystals from the ocean, and small bits of dirt or rock including sand. Dust can also contain tiny fragments of human and animal skin cells, pollution, and hair. Do you want all that sitting on your lampshades? Nope. So while you're dusting, I want to tell you why I love Fly Lady's Weekly Home Blessing and why I think every man, woman, and bird from Snow White should make it into a weekly habit. 
The first reason I love it is because it's only an hour long and you get so much done in that short hour. Normally to complete these seven tasks could be a two hour or more process over the span of a few days, but the weekly home blessing allows you to complete it all in one day while challenging you to move quickly so that you get each task done in only 10 minutes. This is motivating and it naturally puts you into a hustle because you know time is running out and you wanna get as much done as you can before the time is up. The second thing I love is how she gives you the freedom to move on to the next task when the timer does go off. Even if the first task isn't complete, you are striving for progress, not perfection. Just like Fly Lady says, housework done imperfectly still blesses your family. Sure, you may not finish dusting every corner, but you still just spent 10 minutes taking care of dust that wouldn't have been removed otherwise, and now your home is cleaner, and that's all that matters. I always find that after a weekly home blessing, I never notice the imperfections afterwards. All I notice at that point is how nice it feels to be in my home, how the floors shine and smell like delicious pears, how my bed invites me in with fresh clean sheets, and how easily I can spy on my neighbors with streak-free windows. And with only one hour, I feel good about myself. I get a sense of, hey, I can do this. I can keep a clean home. And if you can do this for one hour every Saturday or Monday or whatever day is best for you, then it only gets easier from there. Next week, you're not gonna have as much to dust. You could probably get away with even setting your timer to only five minutes for this task. And maybe by next month, you can do your weekly home blessing in 30 or 40 minutes. But what's most important right now is to commit to one day and stick with it. Every Saturday from 10 to 11, I will bless my home. And hey, you could even get your kids and husband in on it. Put the toddlers in charge of dusting because they'll have way too much fun with it, especially if you have a feather duster like I do. Fly Lady's Weekly Home Blessing is hands down my favorite cleaning task. If I ever created my own cleaning routine as many of you have been asking me to, I would include something very similar to this. The reason I've always come back to Fly Lady is because she finds ways to prioritize our time with not only the use of timers to shorten the length of time spent cleaning, but also with the way she ties chores into our already established daily habits to make it as convenient for us as possible such as cleaning the shower while you're taking a shower or cleaning the sink and toilet right after you finish your makeup. And she sets up her routine this way because she doesn't want us to spend so much time cleaning that we miss out on our family. She recognizes that family is one of the most important things in life and should never be placed second to a clean home. And I'm sure you recognize that too.
Okay, my friends, put those dusters away. Your time is up. I don't care if you dusted half of your guitar. Leave the other half there and go grab your window cleaners. It is time to clean the windows, doors, and mirrors. You've got 10 minutes. Now here is a cleaning task I totally neglect year round. I mean, yeah, I clean my mirrors because I need to be able to see myself when I'm putting on mascara, but the windows, I don't even think about them. Perhaps because Jordan, my husband, is always drawing the curtain shut. If it were up to him, we probably wouldn't even have windows. I love a good large window. It just brings in so much light in the house. And I don't know about you, but sunlight motivates me to clean. Maybe that's why everyone cleans in the spring. Finally, the sun is back and something about it gets us up and moving. No one wants to clean in the winter. We just wanna snuggle up under a blanket with a warm cup of coffee and hibernate. I'd say next to Snow White, bears have the next best thing. I wish jobs gave us hibernation pay. Don't forget to put in for your hibernation pay for 1,040 hours between the months of November to April. I want to hibernate in Disneyland. But no, I don't want to sleep. I just want to have fun all the time and never work. I've never been to Disneyland, have you? Is it as amazing as it looks? I'd love to take the kids one day. I just wish it wasn't so expensive. So there's many options on how you can clean your windows. You can use a window cloth. You can use paper towels. Some people say you can even use newspaper. I've never tried it, but it definitely intrigues me. And I believe it because too many of you have told me this. Or maybe I'm just gullible. I get so many repeat comments of people telling me the same thing. And I get the same questions a lot too. One of the most common questions is, what do I prefer? Fly Lady? Organized Mom? Dana K. White? It's tough because I like them all for different reasons. I like Dana because of her laundry day. I like Fly Lady because of her weekly home blessing. I like Organized Mom because of her Friday focus. They're all great cleaning routines written by very smart women who have spent their lives trying to figure out how the heck to manage a home, which isn't an easy equation to solve. Women have been trying to figure this out since the dawn of time. I also have a hard time deciding which routine I prefer because I've spent the last year out of my routines. I used to be a diehard Fly Lady fan until I got pregnant and just didn't feel like I could do it anymore. Now that my baby's getting older, I'm finding I have a little more time on my hands, but it's just hard to jump back into the routines again. Like I said earlier, getting started is the hardest part. But if I did start a cleaning routine again, Fly Lady all the way. Why? Because it's familiar and I had a lot of success with it. Organized Mom and Clean Mama, I only did their routines for a couple weeks. Fly Lady, I followed for a whole year, and my house looked amazing that year. It's so intimidating to start at first, but when I got into the swing of things, it all started to feel natural, and my house was consistently clean. Maybe I could have had the same success with the other ladies, but it's hard to switch when you're already having so much success with your current situation. And Dana K. White, she is brilliant. I love everything I learned from her and I have put a lot of it into practice. But her cleaning routine just isn't a completed cleaning routine. She leaves a lot of blanks for you to fill in yourself. Although I love her attitude on dishes and her laundry system. And I related to her the most. I'd say my favorite is a mix of Fly Lady and Dana K. White. But you know what? I still have more cleaning routines to try and I plan on trying quite a few before I create my own. I really want to get a good idea of what works for people. It's hard to write a one-size-fits-all cleaning routine. Actually, I'd say it's impossible to do that. Because we're all different people and what works for me may not work for you. A lot of you have said that laundry day just doesn't mesh with you. That a load of laundry a day is what has been most successful. But for me, I'll never be successful with a load a day. I tried for three years and failed miserably. But that's okay. It's all about finding what works for you. I love trying a good cleaning routine, but at the same time, I don't because then I'm like, ugh, now I have to clean my house? In spite of that, it feels so good the week after you're done when your home is actually clean. There's nothing like someone showing up at your door and knowing that you can actually let them in. People don't really show up at the door anymore in 2023 though. Everyone texts you from their car, I'm here. 
I remember one time I had a meeting with someone from Facebook Marketplace to sell them a desk. They showed up at my house and texted me they were here, but I was so distracted cooking dinner, I never checked my phone. So they waited in their car for 30 minutes while texting me. Finally, I saw my phone and came outside apologizing profusely. I said, why didn't you ring the doorbell? They said, oh, we didn't want to disturb you, but we had plans to meet. Yet they were afraid to come to my door as if that was just a totally inappropriate thing to do? 2023, it's a weird time. All right, let's cut to the music. Keep cleaning those windows. Did you run out of windows yet? If you did, you can get a head start in the next task, which is vacuuming. That's okay. But I'm still going to finish out the rest of this 10 minute span for those of us who are still stampeding through peanut butter. My mom always said that when I became a mom, my pace would get a little quicker because I would learn to move faster due to a lack of having time. But she was wrong. I'm just as slow as ever. I hate showing the true speed of my cleaning in my videos because I move so stinking slow. That's why I decided to use a lot of old clips so that I could speed up my new clips. Because I don't think watching me clean as slow as I do would motivate you very much. Does anyone get motivated by watching a turtle cross the road? No. But it's okay. It still gets done. Maybe Martha Stewart can clean more windows than me in the span of 10 minutes, but I still got a lot of windows clean too. 
and she doesn't have my charm, okay? Or my long curly locks, so take that, Martha. I actually don't even know who she really is. She's probably a pretty cool lady, so Martha fans, please don't attack me. All right, your time is up. Put away your window cleaners, go find your vacuums and brooms. It's time to vacuum the floors. I'm setting the timer for another 10 minutes. Here is another question you guys ask me a lot. Where did I get my vacuum? I got it on Amazon. I went from one of those bulky old vacuums from the 2000s to this beauty right here. Cordless, lightweight, and easy to empty. I love it. I bought it on Black Friday. I took a chance on this random brand and I'm so glad it worked out. I've had it for over a year now and it's still going strong. I'll put the affiliate link in the description if you are interested because I know I'm gonna get like 20 more comments asking, where'd you get your vacuum? Where can I find that vacuum? So it should be there for you. You're still gonna see my old vacuum in this video because like I said earlier, some of the footage in here is reused. I will say that having such an easy to use vacuum has caused me to clean my floors more often. When all you have to do is pick it up and switch a flip, it makes cleaning so easy. No one wants to unwrap and rewrap a long cord. It's just inconvenient. And with my luck, I'll trip over the cord because I'm the biggest klutz. Argue me in the comments. I bet I'm a bigger klutz than you. I trip on a daily basis. One time, while I was walking across the room quickly, I tripped into a laundry basket. Yes, I literally fell inside of it. I became the laundry. I just laid there and laughed for two minutes. Whenever I do something like that, my husband will say, classic Ariel. You know, I was thinking about all of my cleaning wraps I've made. A lot of you love to hear me rap. Hey, I don't blame you. I'm a good rapper. I've rapped about cleaning the fridge, packing for a vacation with a toddler, cleaning the oven. I'm working my way up to a whole album. But something you may not have known is that I've been rapping for years. Yeah. I'm 28 years old now, but I was going through some old videos and found this clip of when I was 16, rapping about my US history vocab. And I thought, you guys would love this. So here it is. We're going back to 2010. Yeah. US history, yo. It's how I do. You wanna learn that vocab? Just follow me. We got salutary neglect, a time before 1763. You in check? We got the Stamp Act, yo, a direct tax, and all the articles and documents and documents and articles. And how many times can you say documents and articles in the same sentence, yo? You heard? But not the Patriots, dog. The Patriots were the ones who favored separation from Britain, kitten. Yeah. If I can say dog, I can say kitten. Yo, or frog. How cringy was that? Is it sad that 12 years later I pretty much still look the way I looked when I was 16? I've got to tell you guys a little secret. When I was in high school, I made hundreds of videos like this and flooded YouTube with them. No one watched them. I never got past 300 subscribers in five years, but it was just for fun. Don't go looking for them. They're not there anymore. I stopped making them in 2012 and I ended up picking it up again in 2021. Didn't think I would. It's scary to say that I have tons of videos just like that one. Being a YouTuber was my childhood dream. I never thought I would make it come true. Would you be interested in seeing more of my old videos? Let me know in the comments. Maybe just for fun, I could put some of them together and show you a snippet of that awkward mom as a kid. That awkward kid. What about you? When you were a kid, what was your dream? According to CBS News, 86% of young Americans want to become a social media influencer. We live in a different world now, but there's nothing like YouTube 2007. Niga Higa, Smosh, Chocolate rain, I was there for it all. Still got your pearls hanging by my bedside. Still got your lips and paper in the trash now. I never knew. Love could be so sweet, I never knew it would sting, I never knew love like this would leave me in pieces. Oh, Emily, when did you fall out of love? Oh, Emily, when 
are you doing vacuuming? Make sure not to vacuum any Legos and don't step on them either because there's nothing more painful than that. You are doing so good on your weekly home blessing. Can you believe that you've made it through about 45 minutes now? You are so awesome. If your hour is almost up and you just have one more task after this, and then you can sit down, put your feet up and relax in your company ready living room. What the heck, call up Aunt Sally, invite her and her cat over just because you can, but not for another 15 minutes or so. We're not done just yet. Focus on the task at hand. Vacuum, vacuum, vacuum. How do you spell vacuum? Try it. And I'll tell you if you got it right. Go ahead. It's V-A-C-U-U-M. Did you get it right? If you did, like this video. You have passed the weekly home blessing spelling bee. I am so very proud. If you got it wrong, then join the club. I had to Google it. Did you know that you can burn anywhere between 100 and 300 calories if you clean for one hour? So you're not only getting your home cleaned, but you're burning calories. You better reward yourself after with a full-size chocolate bar. I'm kidding, but I'm not. But I am. But I'm not. But I'm not. So the best part about the weekly home blessing is when you're done, you're done for the week. A lot of cleaning routines will have you dust one day, vacuum the next, mop the next. That seems so inconvenient when you can do all three in one day under an hour. This is truly the way to go. By the end of this video, you will be a believer in the weekly home blessing. I will make you one. Or maybe you already are one if you're doing this with me. Or you're just watching while sitting on the couch eating zebra cakes. Either way, I'm glad you're here but you get off the couch right now and get right on that weekly home blessing so I can sit down and finish your zebra cake. It's okay though, you can always rewatch this video and start next week. Feel free to watch and clean with me every Saturday. So far, I'm the only YouTuber besides the fly lady with an hour long weekly home blessing video, which honestly, I was very surprised by. Today with Terry K, you should get on that. She has been killing it on YouTube with the fly lady videos. But anyway, I will stop harassing you. If you want to watch this and eat your zebra cakes or lie on the floor while your two-year-old uses your belly as a bouncy chair, you do you. I'm just happy you're willing to watch me for an hour. That would be my husband's worst nightmare to hear me talk for that long, but it's okay because it would be my worst nightmare to hear him talk for an hour too. Because all he talks about is football and Magic the Gathering and other nerdy stuff. But I do love my nerd. Does anyone else have a nerd for a husband? All right, you're almost done. Keep going. Triple A, credits are right. Hang up the phone and let your heart break on the inner lane. 24 twice. She's on the phone, but she's staying on Well, shop full of art, old dreams dying hard It wants you to return this love Breathing in the dark, weightless, working hard He wants you to return his love Put away your brooms. We are moving on to the very last task of the weekly home blessing. Go get your mops. It's time to give the floors a good clean. You have 10 minutes. Mop as fast as you can. I have always found mopping to be quite the exercise. It's the only part of the weekly home blessing that makes me sweat. Perhaps that could also be because I'm at the tail end of my cleaning and have already cleaned for 15 minutes. 
who knows? But what I do know is that mopping makes my floors look shiny and us women like shiny things. I just love that feeling when the home is finally cleaned. I feel like everyone is more relaxed, including my four-year-old. There's something about a clean room that helps him to focus better. For example, I notice that whenever I clean up the dining room table, that becomes the moment when he suddenly wants to play with Play-Doh or color in his coloring book. And it amazes me how much better he focuses when he has a clear surface to work with. When the living room is covered in toys, more often than not, he often complains of being bored and he says he doesn't know what to do. But once I clean up all of the toys, then he seems to have no problem finding something to do. I think when a space is cluttered, it just stresses us out. Even as adults, do you want to cook dinner if the counter is covered in dishes and unopened mail? No, I'd feel overwhelmed. What do I do? Do I open the mail, wash the dishes, cook dinner? It's just too much. So now instead, I choose to do none of the above and I order a pizza. What do we do about this? Well, we have to get into some kind of routine because a lack of routines is what keeps our house messy. And it doesn't have to be Fly Lady's routine or Organized Mom or Dana K. White. It can be whatever routine that works for you which is just something that you make into a habit, such as opening your mail right away before you even set it on the counter, or putting the dishes right into the dishwasher instead of the sink. These kind of habits are what create routine in our lives and keep our homes in order. Are you breaking a sweat yet mopping those floors? You're so close, don't give up now, just keep on going. The end is near and let me tell you, it's a happy ending. There's nothing better than a happy ending. Unlike the ending of Kyle XY, which was just horrible. Did anyone ever watch that show back in 2006? The boy without the belly button. I also did not enjoy the ending to the show Lost either. That was a disappointment. Which TV show have you watched where the ending left you feeling utterly disappointed? I bet all these questions that I keep asking you are pretty distracting, huh? I just want to learn more about all of you. So I hope you have memorized every question I've asked in this past hour and are prepared to answer everyone at the end. There will be a test. Test question number one. What question did I ask you while we were changing our sheets? Was it A, what time do you drink coffee in the morning? B, how many cups of coffee do you drink a day? C, how much creamer and sugar do you put in your coffee? Or D, does your third cup of coffee help you wake up in the morning? What do you think it is? If you said B, you are correct. I asked how many cups of coffee do you drink a day? I'm very curious how many people got that right. All right, the test is over. It was only one question. Be wrapped around your arms instead of being lonely we could be gazing at the stars but now it feels just like i wandered off into a room and closed the door behind me i never gave the key to you even though i wanted to i should be trying something new but now my body's aching I'm tired of dwelling in the dark, it's just that my heart can't take it I didn't know what it would cost me when I let you go I feel alone, and I'm just singing mm, mm, mm. It should have been you Another time, another place, I just know mm, It could have been you What a crime and what a shame to let go Sometimes I just don't know what to do It should have been you I could be driving to your place But now the crown is shaking Could be a face but it feels like It will never go away Until we make up I can't be myself I never knew how much Can you believe it? You're almost done with your weekly home blessing. But keep going, you just have a couple more minutes. Is this your first time doing a weekly home blessing? Have you done it before? Did you like it and will you do it again? 
And if you are just watching but didn't clean with me, did I sell you on the weekly home blessing? You think you'll do it with me next week? That's a lot of questions in a row. I expect answers to every one of them. I enjoy talking with you guys today. This video feels more personal, like I'm hanging out with my friends here on YouTube, just cleaning alongside some wonderful ladies and gentlemen, possibly, maybe even kids for those parents who like to get their kids involved. I need to be better about that. My son is four years old and does not like to clean. Sometimes I like to imagine a world where we all live in the same neighborhood and we help each other. Maybe I'm having a hard day, so I invite you over to help me with the dishes while our kids play, and then I thank you by bringing you some pumpkin chili next week. And all of us moms go to the park and just chat and laugh about all the ridiculous things our husbands said to us that week. Oh, and we would totally throw block parties. It would be so much fun. If you are a mom raising kids and you don't have any mom friends, I would encourage you to try to find one. There may be opportunities right in your town. A lot of towns will have mom groups where you can bring your kids and just have the chance to make a friend. In our technical world, there's also an app for it called Pina, literally Tinder for moms. Being a mom can be lonely and isolating. As humans, we need connection and sometimes little people just aren't enough to fulfill that social need. A lot of us just want someone who's in the same place of life to do life with, to share our fears, joys, sorrows, to laugh with until our gut hurts. It can be so hard to find that as adults, but you're not the only one who longs for it. So many others are looking for the same thing. So don't give up because you aren't alone even though it may feel like it. I actually met a mom right in my neighborhood and we became really great friends. One day I was going for a walk, pushing my one-year-old in a stroller, and I saw this other mom walking by herself with a baby strapped to her chest. While walking by each other, we both said hi. I then said, would you like to walk together? She said, sure. And then for the next two years, we would continue to go on walks together two to three times a week before she moved away to another state. She told me that she was really hoping I would ask her to walk with me that day. She too had a desire for a friend. Sometimes we just gotta get out of our comfort zones and approach people even though it's hard. And it may not go well either. Maybe the mom you approach isn't looking for friends. But that's okay, don't beat yourself up about it. Just try again with someone else. Because you just never know when you're going to meet your future best friend. Maybe your best friend is at a mom group right now just waiting to meet you. Be brave, be genuine, and be confident. Anyway, I don't know who needed to hear that, but I remember a time when I needed to hear that. So I hope my little pep talk motivated you today. I've been hanging on, counting days, thinking it was me all along. Had a million conversations in my head about where it went wrong. And I've got no idea where you've been, who you are, not anymore. All I got is this Polaroid picture of us from June 24th. It's where I kissed you for the first time, laid on your sheets. You gave me your heart and said you trusted with me. But all I did was let you down time and time again. It wasn't my intention. Maybe we should have been friends. So, you're someone I used to know. But nobody said it be easy. But maybe I should have known. One more drink to swallow it down. I gotta get you out of my mind. But nobody said it was easy. Maybe I should have known. I've been out till late, shifting beds, trying to kill the image of you. Got a million stupid reasons not to call It's just that I want to Do you remember how we Pulled the drapes in the basement To get away from the world that we couldn't fit in And how we used to walk those empty All right, put down your mops and go switch the laundry from the washer to the dryer. You did it! You got through your weekly home blessing. And after you switch the laundry, you can sit down and put your feet up. Relish in the moment. Mmm, do you smell the pears? Well, probably not if you don't use Fabuloso as your mopping solution, but 
just enjoy your clean house. Instead of watching yet another cleaning video, why don't you check this one out? It's the story behind how my husband and I met. It's quite interesting and a really fun video too. I'll see you there.